Here we go, our third and final game this Friday evening. It's Baranga Ginebra up against the San Miguel Beerman. A six one guard from Cagayan Valley, number 11, Stanley Pringle. And a five nine guard from Nasu Pumatangas, number five, L.A. Tenorio. Head coach for Ginebra is Tim Cole. And now the starters for the San Miguel Beerman. A 5'9 guard from Ibus Cavite, number 7, Terrence Romeo. A 6'2 guard from La Paz Leite, number 6, Chris Ross. A 6'3 forward from Ilongo Sur, number 13, Marshall Lassiter. A 6'4 forward from Nupal Pampanga, number 29, Arwin Santos. And a 6'10 center from Pinamuan Cebu, number 15, Jumar Fajardo. Head coach for San Miguel is Leo Austria. Our referees for this game, Jimmy Mariano, Albert Kugler, Jeff Cantar, and Florian. Starters for both these squads, Tenorio, Pringle, Aguilar, Stan Hardinger, and Thompson for Barangay Ginebra. We've got Romeo, Ross, Fajardo, Santos, and Lasseter for the San Miguel Beerman. So between these two squads, they've won the last few All-Filipino Cups. This tip-off is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. So the usual starters here for San Miguel and Ginebra. First quarter is now underway. First possession to Barangay Ginebra, the defending champions. And a lot of great matchups here in this game as we expect, you know, Chris Ross probably against LA Tenorio, but right now he's guarding this man, Stand the Man Pringle. That's a good matchup. At that time, winning out is Stanley. And great aggressive move there to start this first quarter, getting the early foul for Chris Ross. That was textbook there for Stanley, making sure there's a little bump to be able to, to make sure that there's a foul. At the very least, he's got free throws, and that's where he is right now. And that bump really creates a lot of space for Stanley Pringle to put up his shot. And that time he got fouled. And you have to, you know, at least attempt that for you to have two free throws. Breaking the ice here in this ball game for Barangay Ginebra is Pringle with those two free throws. Ross, playing point, finds Arwin. Arwin for three. Bang! Three. Great horn set up there by San Miguel, Junmar, and Arwind having screens for Chris Ross and Chris Ross doing what he does, setting up his teammates for that bucket. Here's Pringle once again. Christian with an easy put back. Nothing Chris Ross could do there. Here's Terrence, the hero of their last ball game and picking up where he left off the last time out. And a lot of buckets in this first minute in this game. Terrence Romeo against his former teammate, Stanley Pringle. We all know they had experience before as teammates. Now they're going up against each other in this big game. Not to say these teams are not playing defense. There's just better offense to start things off. Drop it. Steal there from Marshall. Let's talk about defense. Marshall Lasseter in the help side getting that steal. Arwin thinking about it and just hands it off to the big man, Junmar. There's a quick double. They swing that ball around, but a nice recovery there by Pringle. Wow, another basket there. And pick and pop play there. Just to end that, you know, broken play, Arwin Santos finishing that two-man action. Quick timeout going to be called here by Coach Tim Cohn. We're not sure if it's a 30 or a full. We're going to say it's just a 30 second timeout, so we're going to hang on to the air here. But Coach Tim obviously is not liking what he's seeing. Quickly calls this timeout. And a lot of offense for both teams, not a lot of stops. But we know that Coach Tim Cohn likes calling these early timeouts just to see what the other team is doing and how they can adjust in terms of the defensive coverages and the offensive plays of the other team. Doesn't matter, he's just going to use the 30 here anyhow. A lot of times they use that latter, the latter part of the first half, but might as well use it early because you don't want things to get out of hand as quickly as the first couple of minutes 
of the first period. Especially with a team like San Miguel, you know, they're a talented team. Everyone can score. So you have to make sure that you also counter probably with stops or executing on offense to have easy shots. They go to Pringle once again. Looking inside. Stand the man. It's going to lose possession. That's going to be a nice matchup to look forward to. Stand Hardinger against Junmar Fajardo. Fajardo with a solid pick. Romeo with a basket. And with Terrence Romeo, we, we know he can shoot from the three, he can drive, but that mid-range game is bread and butter for Terrence Romeo. So the San Miguel Beermen splitting the scoring between Arwin Santos and Romeo. LA Tenorio hits from the outside. So answer back right away is LA Tenorio with that three-pointer. Marsh is going to bring it down against Scotty Thompson. There's that quick double. Cross-court pass almost picked off. Romeo launches and hits. And look at this back and forth. Terrence Romeo and then LA Tenorio. And in that possession, just shooting it over the Teniente. Corner three-pointer for Terrence Romeo. San Miguel Beer now with their biggest lead of the ball game. See Stan thought about it. We'll bring it closer. Pass a little bit too low. Romeo stops, pops, and misses. We'll get his own rebound, though. It's for his big man. Scotty Thompson with a big block. And this is going to be interesting. How Junmar Fajardo will, you know, dominate the paint with the bigs of Hinebra guarding him. You know, the bigs of Hinebra and Japet Aguilar and C-Stand, they're also a tough matchup for Junmar. So let's see how he's going to do here against these two bigs. Aguilar is going to give it up. Scotty. See Stan with a jumper. Back rim. One of the few times we're going to see San Miguel walking it up. They've been really forcing the action. There's that quick double again. Making sure that Junmar doesn't get into any sort of groove. And you look what Hinebra is trying to do here. Every time Junmar has the ball in that post, even without the dribble, they're sending the double and forcing them to move the ball around instead of Junmar just dominating the inside. Chris Ross with a steal. Chris Ross forcing the issue, gets blocked there by Japet. So Chris Ross now going past Dean Dupomari in the overall steals list. He's now solo at number five in the PBA history. An offensive foul is going to be called there on Scotty. They're saying he was wrapping his arms around the defender. Well, we're billing this as an epic encounter, and so far it's living up to that billing. Back and forth affair, Ross. Music can take on LA Tenorio, at least inside that paint. And right there, it was kind of a bit, it, it was a bit clogged on the post as Junmar was on Chris Ross's way. Getting away, Stanley Pringle. That's going to bring Barangay Hinebra to within three. Almost five minutes gone here in quarter number one. Romeo, they'll swing it around, Ross for three, bang! Chris Ross, three. And Chris Ross with the three there. Early in his career, a lot of teams would take that shot any day. Would He would give Chris Ross that shot, but right now he has developed that three-point range. He can make that from time to time. Always working on his game. Point lead enjoyed here by San Miguel Beer, the biggest lead of the ball game for their squad. Look at this quick move once again by Stan the Man. Just so explosive is Stanley Pringle. And on the other side, Chris Ross with that open three pointer. You can see Barangay Hinebra trying to dare him to shoot that, but Chris Ross can make that at this point of his career. Romeo, long two. A little bit too strong. 
Viniente picks up that rebound. Pringle is off and running, stops, hits a three. Stanley Pringle feeling it in this game. He's been aggressive here in this first quarter. A couple of ba baskets for him. Three-pointers, floaters, and also free throws as well. Really looking for the hoop there. There's a steal off the steals leader. That's going to be a foul. Well, Chris Cross getting a taste of his own medicine that time. And he's saying that shouldn't be called for a foul because it's a loose ball, but you can't go on top of a player like this if you're trying to get the ball. So he got a good call by the referees. That's going to bring us to our first timeout. This timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Welcome back to our coverage of the Honda PBA Philippine Cup 2021. Anthony Stai here together with Diego Dario. It's the battle between sister teams, Barangay Hinebra, up against the San Miguel Beerman. So for Barangay Hinebra, Stanley Pringle, aggressive in this game, already with seven points in the first quarter. And on the other side, his former teammate, Terence Romeo, already with seven points as well. So it's going to be a great matchup between these two elite scorers in the PBA. I'm sure these two squads, when they check the calendar and they see the other team, they're like, okay, we're gonna encircle this because this is gonna be a big game for us. And a lot of fans for sure are, have been waiting for this game. At this point, five and a half remaining in the first period. San Miguel up by three. Got a feel of a championship game. Yep. Steal by Tenorio. He's got two already here today. Extra pass. Pringle open for three. Bang. Three, and Stanley three, Pringle already with in double digits early in this game. Great find there by LA Tenorio for that corner three. I have not seen Stanley Pringle this aggressive this conference. Romeo as well, look at that. Shaking, baking, and hitting. And Terrence Romeo dancing right there with Barangay Hinebra for that mid-range jumper. Ross in the open court, finds Romeo. Romeo left open. Got a big rebound by Marcio. That's just great timing by Marcio Lassiter. He saw Japet Aguilar, jumped early for that rebound, and he took advantage of it. Lead back up to four for the San Miguel Beerman. Four minutes and some change to be played here in the first canto. Pringle once again creating some space. And Stanley Pringle ever aggressive in this game. That bump first before that mid-range jumper against one of the best defenders here in the PBA. Do you think he got challenged because he knows he's up against Chris Ross? That's for sure. We all know how competitive all these players are, especially between these two teams. Charge is going to be called. Good position there by Teniente. And right here, you see the extra pass. Elin Tenorio just finding the open man, Stanley Pringle. It's too much space and too much time for him. And right here, creating the space with the bump to find an open look in the mid-range. Well, so far, you have to say Stanley Pringle owns Chris Ross here 
at least in the first canto. Let's see how Chris Ross, you know, answers and tries to bounce back against Stanley Pringle. San Miguel Beer is up by two. They've got 19 points on the board, but still nothing from Junmar Fajardo. But in a lot of Stanley Pringle shots, actually, Chris Ross played good defense. He, he was right in front of him. It was just better offense by Stanley Pringle just hitting difficult shots. Mota Tua, of course, going to give a different challenge here. San Miguel Beerman will call time here. They're up by two, 19-17. Welcome back to Bacolor, Pampanga for this matchup between the San Miguel Beermen and Parangay Ginebra. No love lost between these two sister teams. As you take a look at Stanley Pringle and his performance here so far. So Stanley Pringle doing most, a lot of the damage here for Barangay Ginebra, doing it in the mid-range. A couple of three-pointers and strong drives as well for Stanley Pringle. As you can see, 12 points, only one miss from the field. An impressive 12 points already. And we're not even done yet. Exactly. The first quarter. Jared Dillinger has checked in now for Barangay Ginebra together with Aljun Mariano. Romeo launches and hits. And another guy who's feeling it in this game, Stanley Pringle and Terence Romeo going at it. So former teammates already in double digits here in this one. They're going mano a mano. Pringle with a fall away. Will miss. One of the rare misses for Stanley here. Look at the three-point field goal numbers. So a hot shooting night here for both teams, at least in the first quarter. Extra body check there coming from Christian Stad Harninger as he got two in the chest here from Motel 2 and they're talking and joying and we're still just in the first period. And we all know both of these guys are friends but they're just very competitive inside that basketball court and expect them to go at it the whole game as the refs are trying to talk to them as well. Gotaldera is checking in for the first time. Gonna be a foul. Gold on Mariano. A swipe from the back. Only the first team foul for Baranga Ginebra. San Miguel already with three. Looking for Tautua. Marsha now. Tautua can hit that and does. So Motau Tua providing a different kind of game when he subbed in for Junmar Fajardo. Now he can stretch the floor and hit those three-pointers. Let's see this matchup deep inside. See Stan against Mo. Mariano for three. Yes! It's raining threes here in Pampanga. Both teams shooting well from the three-point line. Let's see if they continue to do so in the next minutes and quarters. Marshall, no. Christian with the rebound, and here comes Teniente. Gonna put up a three of his own. That's not gonna count, they say. 
an offensive foul and it came first. LA saying, I put it up, it's simultaneous, it should count. The officials say otherwise. So right there, I think it was a moving screen, that's why LA Denario was that open for that three-pointer. Joppet will check back in. Stan Hardinger will hit the bench for the first time. Terrence, so far with a scintillating first period. Gonna dance with Jabet Aguilar here. Gets a shot off, just short. And a push it, looking for some early offense. Looking for Stanley. Dillinger, no. CJ Perez has checked in. What a second unit here for San Miguel. CJ Perez, Motau Tua. Just a deep team. Marshall left open. That's one individual. You cannot give that much time and space. And as you said, that's too much time, too much space for Marshall Lasseter. And he doesn't need much for him to pull off that three-pointer. And he did that time for that corner three. It's now an eight-point lead, the biggest lead in the ball game here for the San Miguel Beerman. And right here, CJ Perez attracting the defense of Jared Dillinger. And it's just too late on the closeout. Marshall Lasseter will hit that all day. You can see the frustration written on the face of Tim Cohn. Saying you can leave a lot of other guys in that squad possibly open, but not Marshall. And a lot of you know defensive rules here in the PBA, a lot of cons you know the consistent rule is don't help on that strong side corner. You have to take away that pass because that's the easiest pass off the drive. I has checked in. Nice switching defense up high. Then they go inside. Easy two there for Japet. And Japet just quickly putting up that two-pointer over Motau Tua. Not a lot of moves because he knows he's more athletic than him. Seven seconds difference from the shot clock and the game clock. CJ Perez, his first shot will be short. And the Beermen are going to have the last attempt at the basket here. Terence Ro Romeo will go one and one here. He feels he's got the advantage. Tautua for three, no. What a fantastic first period here. Both these squads coming out. Guns blazing. And Terence this guy, Romeo there. Terence Romeo. Two three-pointers in the first quarter and a couple of mid-range shots. He's doing everything for San Miguel. Welcome back to our coverage of the Honda PBA Philippine Cup 2021. It's a battle between Barangay Ginebra and San Miguel Beer this Friday evening. Anthony Sutai together with Diego Dario. We've got a good one on our hands. 
Perez launches a three short. He's going to get that long rebound though. Sets up Pesumal and Pesumal hits. And one Pesumal right off the bench. Shooting a three-pointer right away for San Miguel. And that's what he's paid for to spread the floor for San Miguel. And the lead is back up to eight. Mariano now to Scotty. Scotty stopped in his tracks. And here come the Beermen in the open court once again. Good transition defense though by Barangay Hinebra. CJ rifles a pass. Ross for three. That's a deep one. And again, Barangay Hinebra daring him to shoot that three. But Chris Ross proving them otherwise. He's, he has two three-pointers now in this game. And the lead of the Beerman has ballooned to 12. It seems like they're picking up from that win they had the last time out against TNT. Well, that's for sure a lot. For sure their confidence is up there beating the number one team, giving them the first loss of this conference. Here's Ross in the open court, all the way through. What a move there by Chris Ross, finishing on the other side. Yeah, it's gonna be a full timeout here called by the San Miguel Beerman. And this timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. We'd like to welcome everybody back to this epic matchup between the San Miguel Beerman and the defending champions, Barangay Hinebra. And right here, Chris Ross with two deep three-pointers for San Miguel. And look at this, showing us an LA Tenorio move, finishing on the other side, his own version of that Pambansang reverse. And that forces the hand of Coach Tim Cohn to call another early timeout here. And we expect, not looking good early. We expect Barangay Hinebra to put in their starters here just to stop the bleeding for them. And there's Stanley Pringle, as you said, and as you expected. One of the few bright spots for Barangay Hinebra here today. And right here, points off turnovers for San Miguel. They already have 12, taking advantage of the errors of Hinebra. Tenorio puts up a three, hits. And that's his second three-pointer. That's what you want, putting in the starters, stopping the bleeding for your team, but it's still an 11-point lead for San Miguel. Two minutes gone here in the second period. Second unit of San Miguel Beer. Doing a good job here, CJ Perez. And San Miguel just, they have so many weapons, CJ Perez, Chris Ross also going well, doing well here on offense. Von Pesumal, and this is, you know, their second unit playing for them. Christian hits the deck. Right here, the strong drive. CJ Perez just finishing over Stanley Pringle. The lead is back up to 13. Jopet in trouble, finds Tenorio. Tenorio will be fouled. And I think LA Tenorio got hit in the front of his leg in that quad muscle. And that's gonna hurt. Although it's nothing serious, if you get hit there, it's really gonna bother you maybe until tomorrow. And that's what's gonna happen for LA Tenorio. He's gonna play through that. 
knowing his heart for the game. And he's one of the Ironmen yep. here in the PBA. Never wants to sit out. Traveling is going to be called there on Stanley. And great job on defense there for CJ Perez, just staying in front, using his legs against Stanley Pringle. CJ once again trying to make his move. But Lodera gives it up. CJ for three, yes! Look at that, CJ Perez off the bench. Strong drive earlier, and now a three-pointer for him. So doing it inside and outside. They push it in. Jumper not gonna work there for Japet. And it's now a 16-point advantage. This is now the biggest lead. Could be more, another three-pointer there. Back-to-back -back three pointers for CJ Perez and you love how Chris Ross just gave it up to, C to CJ. He knows he CJ has the hot hands and that's what great point guards do. They give it to the advantage, give it to the person who can shoot buckets for your team. The Beerman really on a roll here. That's not gonna drop for Japet. The two free throws coming up here. Right here, CJ Perez off the ball screen. Stanley Pringle went under, and he's going to shoot that 80, 90% of the time because he knows he can make these kinds of shots. Two free throws for Chapman Aguilar. And that's why CJ Perez is such a tough matchup. He can drive very strong to the hole, he can be very physical, and he can also shoot from the outside now for San Miguel. So you just have to pick your poison when you're guarding him. Well, Jago, if you told me, with 8.09 remaining here in the first half, San Miguel will be up 44 to 26. With Junmar Fajardo scoreless, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> and usually that's not the case for San Miguel. You know, Junmar Fajardo is usually where the offense of San Miguel starts, but this time it's coming from the outside from the guards of San Miguel. Now they're trying to go inside to Junmar, try to get him involved. But again, there's a quick double. Ross, a little bit too strong that time. Bounce pass getting away. And it works here. Scotty Thompson Look on the at other that side. Acrobatic finish. Great find for LA Tenorio, but an acrobatic finish for Scotty Thompson. And they're going to whittle away at this lead. We expect Barangay Hinebra to come back. The pass a little bit too strong. Giving it up to Scotty. LA all the way through and just like that LA Tenorio bringing his team back into the ball game and the San Miguel Beerman this time will sue for this timeout Welcome back to Bacalor Pampanga here for our coverage of the Honda PBA Philippine Cup 2021. Here's LA Tenorio in action. No look pass. Scotty Thompson with a finish. Look at that finish for Scotty Thompson. And passing it to LA Tenorio on the next possession, just using his speed against the bigs of San Miguel. That promptly gets them back. It's a 5 to nothing run. Where did the Beermen go? Do they go down low once again to Junmar? 
As Jamal gets blocked. Perez hits another three. That's his third. And who do you guard here for San Miguel? Do you guard Jun Marfoardo in the post? Motal Tua or CJ Perez? Chris Ross also shooting it from the outside. So you can't leave anyone open if you're Barangay Ginebra. Camperales checked in. A little bit too strong on that one. Junmar controlling the rebound. Pesumal for three. Just short. Here comes Arwin Santos. And right here, CJ Perez just, that's just too open for him to miss. And he's feeling it in this game. You can see he's enjoying as well. Already so many heroes for the Beermen here this evening. But of course, let's see if Barangay Hinebra, we all know what they can do with that never say die attitude. It's never over till that last buzzer. Motato is going to pick up a technical foul here. Technical free throw for Maybe at this stage you don't want to pick up a technical because you are still up by 17. You're controlling this game. Of course, you don't want to stop that momentum on your side. And you give Barangay never an easy point. Cuts the lead down to 16. Push them trying to ponder what adjustments he needs to be able to make in the second half. Poor ball movement. L.A. Tenorio was able to track that one down, though. That's a great pass. What a find there. And you can just see the chemistry between L.A. Tenorio and Scotty Thompson. You can see every time L.A. Tenorio goes for that pick and roll or every time he drives on the other side, Scotty Thompson is trying to get that cut for the open shots. And L.A. has been finding him. And usually they talk about this in practice. You know, Eli Tenorio just saying to Scotty Thompson, every time I'm here, try to get this open cut on the other side. And that's what they've been doing for a long time now for Hinebra. They've cut the lead down here to a more manageable level. But still a lot of time to be played. Halfway mark of the second period and still the second half to be contested. Nice find, extra pass, Arwin for three. Short that time. It's gonna stay here with the Beerman. Lasseter has checked in, so even more three-point shooting. Arwin puts up another one and hits. And Arwin Santos. Showing us that he can also join the three-point party for San Miguel. What aggressiveness they're showing from deep down. Caperal. And a pound it inside. Baby hook will drop. And great move, great footwork there by Prince Caperal. Usually he hits three-pointers for them, but that time on the post against Arwin Santos. Look at those three-point numbers. Wow, already 12 for San Miguel and just eight misses. So over 50% for the Beermen. Another three. That time a little bit too strong. Scotty in a rush. Puts up a three of his own and hits. Barangay Hinebra, you know, just hanging on in this game, not letting San Miguel pull away with a, you know, 20 point lead. Just a 12 point ball game. Cross court pass. CJ, a little bit too strong that time. That was a heat check there for CJ Perez. What a great pace this ball game has. A lot of field goals, a lot of buckets for both teams. Not too many stoppages as well. Long two for Caperal. And look at that fancy play for L.A. Tenorio. Going behind his back, faking 
the pass on the left side and finding the open Prince Caperal for that long two. Four minutes still to be played here in the second period. Marshall feels he can take Caperal. Caperal goes under the screen, and that's a big mistake. And you don't want to do that if you know, you're know you guarding Marshall Lasseter. You want to force him to drive inside on that ball screen. But if you go under, he's going to take that all day. Tries to answer back. It's not there. Look at this. CJ Perez will take a seat and in comes an equally hot Terence Romeo. And look at this play, LA Tenorio going behind his back, finding the open Prince Caperal on that right corner. And right here, you just don't want to go under. Marshall Lasseter on the ball screen, he's going to swish that. Romeo trying to create another three? No. Might have been too much that <laughs> went down for Arwin. And eventually they're gonna miss. It's the rule of percentages. But there have been a few games I've seen where you know a team just hot the entire night. But Coach Tim is hoping that isn't the case for the San Miguel Beerman. Look at this, Chris Ross going on the post against the smaller LA. Let's see what he does here. LA went for the steal, <laughs> ill advised. And just great timing by Chris Ross. He saw L.A. Tenorio try to strip that ball from behind and he just went the other way for that easy two. Coach Leo on the other hand saying, I hope the percentages stay the way they are. <laughs> Scotty will lose it. And here comes Terrence. Leaves it over. That's good hands from Tenorio. Tolentino is going to check in for Caperal. And Arvin Tolentino hasn't been getting a lot of minutes in this Philippine Cup. He played well for Barangay Ginebra in that last bubble last year. But right now, of course, with the addition of C. Stan, he has to give up some minutes. And let's see what he does here. C. Stan off the glass? No. Got the space off that bump of Junmar. Now Junmar, I think, wants to try to pay him back. A foul there. It's going to be called at Tenorio. And that's one way Chris Ross can attack for San Miguel. Of course, he's a big guard, one of the tallest guards here in the PBA. And if he has that size advantage, he's going to go down low in the post. It worked the last time, it worked here. Especially makes both free throws, or at least even one. And he also picked up a foul from LA. So last game, Chris Ross only scored three points for San Miguel. Now he's in double digits with 10. 11 if he makes this. And it's there. And the lead of San Miguel back up to 16. Down to 12 at one stage. Denorio on the outside. Floater will drop. And just the soft touch in LA Denoria for that floater off the ball screen. Boy, this game being played such a high clip. There's a pass intercepted here. Good defense there from LA. Asks for it. Finds Thompson. Thompson extra pass. Tolentino puts it through. And again, LA finding the cutting Scotty Thompson and just giving the extra pass to Arvin Tolentino down low. And here comes that rally once again for the Barangay Hinerba squad. Just a 30 second timeout. Going to be called by Coach Leo. So Hinebra not pulling away. No, I mean, not letting San Miguel pull away. In this game, as you can see, L.A. Tenorio, he had the shot, gave it up to the cutting Scotty Thompson and just the drop-off extra pass to Arvin Tolentino. That's textbook. And of 
course, moving without the basketball is Scotty Thompson to help let that play evolve. And a lot of times in the scouting report in the PBA, if you're guarding Scotty Thompson, you have to know where he is at every time, every possession. Because anytime you look away, he's going to cut and he's going to find that open spot on the floor. Lead has been cut down to 12, a minute and 11 seconds remaining here. So two players in double digits for Hinebra, that's LA Tenorio and Stanley Pringle. But for San Miguel, already three in double digits. And they're looking for more. And not one of those scorers is Junmar Fajardo. Under a minute to be played here in the first half. That's a huge pick. Tolentino attacks. Off that miss, C stand with a putback. And that's what happens when you attack Junmar Fajardo strong in that drive. He won't be able to get that rebound and C stand cleaning up the trash for that offensive rebound. Short there. Difference of 0.6, the game clock and the shot clock. So Hinebra will try to go for the last shot here. And LA Tenorio signaling to his teammates. And that 16 point lead has been cut down to 10. San Miguel has fouls to give. Stan Hardinger, yes! And that was over Junmar Fajardo. This could be big. Oh. That might not count. They're going to confer just to double check. What a way to end the quarter. Chris Ross, though. Had an exceptional first two periods with 11 points. And doing it on the inside and the outside. As you can see, the reverse layup here for Chris Ross. Last game, he only had three points. Now he's already in double digits for San Miguel. But a last minute surge here by Barangay Hinebra has cut the deficit. It's 56 48. The Pyramid still on top, though. Halftime here at the game between Barangay Hinebra and the San Miguel Beerman. Find the Beerman up 56 to 48 as we get back to the action here. It was an exciting first quarter between these two teams. Terence Romeo scorching hot in that first quarter. And on the other side, Stanley Pringle with that strong drive against Marshall Lassiter. They were matching each other basket for basket. And of course, Chris Ross also shooting well from the outside. So San Miguel doing most of the damage from the three-point line, but Stanley Pringle showing his own version of a three. Boy, they were going up and down, up and down, and there was just, you can't say there was no defense. They were trying, but the offense was just so much better. And look at this, defense to offense, Chris Ross finishing on the other side for the reverse layup. Look at CJ, just stopping, popping, and hitting. And that's just the story of the ball game for San Miguel, hitting everything from the outside, but also Barangay Hinebra itching closer against San Miguel in the second quarter. Marshall Lasseter doing what he does best, hitting a three. As you take a look at the numbers here, brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. And when we all thought that San Miguel was going to pull away from Barangay Hinebra, Hinebra finished that second quarter with a run. But look at this, Hinebra shooting better from, from the field than San Miguel, but the three-point percentage of San Miguel hitting 13 three-pointers in the ball game and only six for Barangay Hinebra, and that's gonna hurt. You have to stop some of the three-pointers for San Miguel. Leading scores for both these squads, Pringle with 12, 11 for Tenorio, seven for Scotty Thompson. On the other side, their top three scorers, Romeo with 12,
Chris Ross with 11 and CJ Perez with 11. So you can see essentially Pringle, Romeo, Tenorio, Chris Ross just mirroring each other. And just the great matchups in this game, the point guards, shooting guards, and also some of the small forwards, but no June Mar Fajardo yet, no baskets yet for the big man. So the big men of Barangay Ginebra ready for this matchup against the six-time MVP. Well, as far as San Miguel is concerned, it doesn't matter who's scoring as long as we're up. But their lead, which was once at 19, has now been whittled down to eight. And that's what happens, you know, when you put this guy, L.A. Tenorio, inside the basketball court. He makes the right decisions, especially when it comes to setting up his teammates. Look at this, 3,085 career assists for 10th all-time. Wow. wow. History once again being made here. Right before our very eyes. Back to the ball game. Third quarter action. Stepping on the sideline is Chris Ross. Not the way you want to be able to start out the third period. So two guys making history in this game. First, Chris Ross getting that solo five with his steal in the first quarter. And Eli Tenorio with 10 all-time in assists. And here comes that rally of Barangay Ginebra. It continues here in the second half. They're now just down by six. Terrence calling out the play now. They need his playmaking. They need his scoring. They go right back to him. They like this matchup. They set up Ross. Ross can't hit though. Junmar trying to tap it to himself. Actually, it was he and Arwin battling it out for the rebound. And Barangay Ginebra switching that ball screen with Terence Romeo. So Japet Aguilar ends up with Terence Romeo. So that's not a favorable matchup if you're Barangay Ginebra. They look inside. First two points here for Junmar. And right there, Terence Romeo forcing the defense to him and finding the open Junmar Fajardo on that pick and roll play. t Stan will not challenge. Quickly gives it up. Scotty's pass. Looked like a little bit was too high. Fielded there though. Thompson with a three, hits! And with just with a few seconds on the shot clock, Scotty Thompson with the awareness to put that three up right away. This is the closest that Barangay Ginebra has been able to get to. It's now just down to five. Romeo will miss fire. Quickly out to Pringle. Tenorio, all day to shoot that three, hits. And just like that, it's a two point ball game for Barangay Ginebra, just down by two early in the third quarter. It's going to be a full timeout called here by the San Miguel Beerman. Scotty Thompson hits from three, cuts down that lead. Another three from LA, and they're breathing down the necks of the San Miguel Beerman. This timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Look at the numbers of L.A. Tenorio here. And that's why he has Tim Cohn's trust. 14 points and 7 assists already for L.A. Tenorio in this game. So expect a double-double from him as we have a lot of time left in this ballgame. Romeo hits! Boy, you got a classic matchup on our hands once again. 
billed as an epic encounter. And so far, it's proving to be every inch of the truth. Look at this, battling for that rebound. Pringle inside. Japet with a jumper. Will misfire that time though. Scotty once again. And a foul is going to be called on Arwin. And Scotty Thompson just fighting for that extra possession for Barangay Hinebra. And you don't want to lose Scotty Thompson when you're guarding him. Always going for that offensive rebound. And with Scotty Thompson, you don't even have to call a lot of plays for him. He just makes, you know, the right decisions. He finds open spots on the floor. And it's just up to the point guards in LA Tenorio to find him on those cuts. Second free throw is going to be short, though. Junmar helping out rebounding-wise. But in terms of scoring, only two points. He's allowed the exceptional shooting of his teammates to lead the charge. Almost a perfect pass once again to Junmar. Basket and one here though for Arwin Santos. And Arwin Santos just the right place at the right time there. The pass wasn't for him, but he got the ball right here. As you can see, got the ball right here, went up, and he's not going to miss from that range. Extra aggressive here today is Arwin Santos. A lot of times he allows the rest of the teammates to do the scoring. He will do the dirty work, he'll rebound, he'll play defense. But today, it seems like he wants to put that ball through the hoop. And shooting it from the outside as well, forcing the bigs of Barangay Hinebra to extend out to the shooters of San Miguel. Maybe just a reminder to the rest of the league that, hey, remember, I used to be a scorer. C-Stan gets away inside. See Stan right there using his advantage against Junmar Fajardo. A little bit better when it comes to foot speed is C Stan against Junmar. Putting the ball on the floor, crossover right to left for that end one opportunity. Those two individuals have had so much practice time together when C Stan was playing for the San Miguel Beerman. And of course, a great matchup here. One of the great matchups here in this game, the big men of both teams. Now a matchup that counts. Quick move there for Junmar. And right there, Junmar giving Seastan a taste of his own medicine, putting the ball on the floor as well for that easy layup. Maybe you've forgotten how many MVPs I have, huh? Christian gives it up. Jap it to the jumper. Will come up short. San Miguel Beer up by six. Here's Arwin once again with a jumper. Two more free throws coming up here for Arwin Santos. And that's the challenge when you're trying to defend Arwin Santos on that jump shot. He just jumps so high, especially in the mid-range. It's just tempting to try and out-jump him as well. And that's what Chapet did there, but body contact on the jump shot. Arwin Santos in his unorthodox way of shooting those free throws without bending those knees. Just using his upper body. And of course, the neon accessories of Arwin Santos. A classic. He's been doing that ever since he got to the league. Two missed free throws. Not going to help out the Beerman's cause. LA in the paint. Perfect pass. Finds once again. Japet Aguilar. And that's just a veteran decision by L.A. Tenorio. He saw that Japet Aguilar was guarded by Marshall Lasseter. And if you put it up there, there's no chance that Marshall will get that. Great pass by L.A. Leads down to four. Here comes Arwin. He thought that wasn't off him. Here comes Big Mo. So interesting right here, Big Mo playing with Junmar on the floor. So both big men will be playing for San Miguel in this third quarter. Junmar and Big Mo. Mo's going to take on Japet Aguilar. Japet to the jumper, a little bit too strong. But Scotty's there once again. 
And again, Scotty Thompson giving Hinebra an extra possession. He's done that from the very first minute he stepped onto the PBA. Just oh, always hard so working. active. Yep, hard working player is Scotty Thompson just going for that rebound. And he's probably one of the players who has rebounds in his highlights. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Romeo is going to be called for a foul there. That's going to be his first, but that's going to be the third team foul for the Beerman. San Miguel still up by four. But maybe not for long. Good possession here. Barangay Hinebra, they're going to lose it though. CJ Perez in the open court. Terrence. That's a nice fake. Basket and one. And what a move by Terrence Romeo. Just faking out everyone in that possession. Look at this. LA Tenorio. Oh, Terrence Romeo. Shot fake. Pass fake. And the layup over the athletic Japet Aguilar. Wow. That wasn't easy. This might be the easiest part of that play, the free throw, but he misses it. Couldn't finish the three-point play opportunity there. It's Terrence. Lead back up to six. Stan Hardinger gives it up. Tenorio rifles a pass, but the defense was there. That should stay here with Barangay Hinebra. She stand quickly attacks. And that's going to drop. And that second step for C Stan is he just goes right through Junmar's body to avoid the block. Great move there by C Stan. Lead is back down to four. And again, Terrence Romeo against Japet Aguilar on the switch. Just puts up a three. He will miss, but there's Junmar. Now starting to flex his muscles. And probably one of the reasons why San Miguel is so confident in putting up a lot of three-pointers because they know that Junmar is down low to get offensive rebounds like Excellent that. Excellent point. Stan Hardinger hits that floater in the lane. Just an unorthodox move, but very effective for C. Stan. Effective right-hand shot, but he takes his free throws with his left. Here's Junmar once again. Why not go inside to the big man? And Junmar... Showing us his presence here in the third quarter. Let's see if Barangay Hinebra goes right back to C-Stan. Christian from 15 feet, no. Junmar with the rebound. Perez in the open court. Sets up Marshall. That's not gonna count. And that has happened twice in this ball game. An offensive foul on the three-point shot. That's going to hurt because Marsha's shot went down. And it's going to be a different ball game if Marshall Lasseter gets hot for San Miguel. Here comes Aya Ai back. See what the shock troopers can do here for Barangay Hinebra. Starters were able to get them back in this game. Tenorio, no. Quickly try and make his move and nice help there from Scotty to make sure there was no three point play. If you're going to foul someone, make sure they don't make the basket. And that's what Scotty Thompson did right there, making Junmar earn the two points from the line. Oh, 
Well, the Beermen slowly going back to their bread and butter, which has won them more than a couple of Philippine Cups. Of course, Junmar, always a tough matchup for anyone in the league. Lead is back up to eight. T-Stan asking for it. He might attack here once again. And does. And again, C-Stan not shying away from the contact, actually initiating it on that one. Foul is going to be called on CJ Perez, but once again, Christian Stadhardinger. It's been a real thorn here for the Beerman. I should take a look at his left-handed free throw. And he's been making it, so no need to change it if you're a C-Stan. Marshall back to the bench first. Christian now with 14 points. Perfect from the free throw line. Not anymore. Two out of three from there. Decent seven-point lead enjoyed by the Beerman. But remember, it once stood at 19. Mo will miss. Pass. Intercepted there by C-Stan. Ayai goes deep inside. Just three players on C-Stan on that one and finding the open Thompson three. The Somalis check back in for the Beerman. They're going to set things up. A lot of time with the shot clock. And then they attack. And Terence Romeo has really been effective in that ball screen, finding the rollers, finding Junmar, finding Motau Tua in that two man action. Three and a half still to be played here in the third period. Tua now on the line. Motautua just with three points in this ball game. Now four, but a tough task in guarding the big men of Barangay Hinebra. And they continue to talk to one another. Motautua and C Stan. They were traded for one another. Back to Stan Hardinger. Puts it on the floor. That's not gonna drop. That might be a foul on Ayai. And Jasper Ayai trying to do his own version of that Scotty Thompson offensive rebound, just skying over everyone. But called for the over-the-back foul is Ayai. Both teams are now in the penalty, which means that's going to be free throws here for CJ Perez. Coach Tim Cohen is going to be warned. Of course, not happy with the call of the referees. You don't want to give up two. Three opportunities for San Miguel. Coach Tim continues to work the referees. So CJ Perez also with in double digits here for San Miguel, 12 points and shooting well from the field. 66% from the field for him. Almost a steal there. Three eleven to be played here in the third. I, I gives it up. Caparral thought about that three, but 
copped out. Shot clock at three. Caperal launches and hits. And again, the pick and pop action causing problems for San Miguel as the big man of San Miguel is forced to go out on Prince Caperal. Prince Caperal making them pay for leaving him open. Lead has been cut down to seven. Romeo up against Stan Hardinger. Step back three, no. Yeah, he clears the board. Pushes it forward. Nice movement without the basketball. Caparral was fouled. Two free throws coming up here for Prince. And great give and go action there between the two big men of Barangay Hinebra. San Miguel just forced the foul on that play. A timeout will be called here by the San Miguel Beerman, but they still are up by seven. Welcome back to our coverage of the Honda PBA Philippine Cup 2021. Anthony Stai together with Diego Dario for this epic matchup between the San Miguel Beermen and the defending champions, Barangay Hinebra Kings. It's been nip and tuck. Because at one stage, suddenly, the Beermen just caught fire, opened up a 19-point lead, and everybody was thinking it was going to be a blowout. And then suddenly, Barangay Hinebra comes right back. And that's just the never-say-die attitude of Barangay Hinebra. Just coming back in this game against San Miguel, as you see the standings here for the Philippine Cup. On San Miguel Beerman, the top part of the standings. But of course, they'd like to be able to move up to the top two. And with Barangay Hinebra, they always do this when it comes to the Philippine Cup. They have a slow start and eventually they get their rhythm, they get their chemistry as a team, and they end up with a lot of wins at the latter part of the stage coming into the playoffs. That's, that's Coach Tim making sure that his team is peaking at the right time. Yep, and that's what happened last year when they won the championship. Slow starts, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish in this league. Well, the big question here, Jago, is the fact that you know you start to find your rhythm and then all of a sudden, there might be another break once again. Yup, that's for sure. You will never know. Those are things that, you know, we can't really control. You'll never know if one test comes out positive, one test, you know. It's just uncertainty around the PBA players here. That's why Coach Yang Yao had a great interview a few days ago when he said, you're only as good as your last swab test. It's not anymore your last game. <laughs> but because there are just so many factors already that have to be considered just to be able to play a basketball game. So it's a different version now of the PBA, but a lot of fans are for sure are happy with a lot of basketball in this Philippine Cup. Nice put back there by Mo Taltua. Another one of those players who have tremendous hops. Rattles in that free throw. Three-point play is going to give the Beerman another nine-point edge. So eight points already for Big Mo Tautua. So many contributors here offensively as JDV, Joe Devance making his first entry. Almost a good pass there to Caperal. Pass behind Mo. 
pass behind Tolentino. And here, Alba is lonesome. Arwin Santos. Back-to-back -back turnovers for Barangay Ginebra, leading to a easy, an easy basket for San Miguel on the other side. Just when we talked about it being a close affair once again, the leaders ballooned back up to 11. The Vance. Not a good entry pass there. And another turnover for Barangay Ginebra. They set up Perez. Not gonna drop though. And this has been the story for Barangay Ginebra. Every time that second unit comes in for them, the lead just balloons for them. 23 bench points for San Miguel, only 13 for Barangay Ginebra. But Arvin Tolentino stepping up from the bench. Off a pinpoint pass from JDV. Watch it once again. That's what JDV can do. He can play make even if he's a big man and Arvin Tolentino just finishing the play on that one. Let's see if he finish the three, finishes the three-point play. He completes it. And Chris Ross trying to play with the time here. Just about seven seconds difference. Game clock and the shot clock here in the third period. Active hands from Scotty Thompson, but he's got to be very careful because both these squads are already in the penalty. Yep, you don't want to give up three, three points for the other team to end the third quarter. Ross with a handoff. Pesumalno. Time for Barangay Ginebra for one final shot here in the third period. Devance for three. Good line, a little bit too strong. And, the end of three, it is 82 and three quarters are done here this evening. And the Beermen head into the fourth period up 82 to 74. Fourth and final quarter. Just about ready to start here. Let's take a look at June Mar Fajardo finally on the scoreboard. All those 10 points here in the second half. And San Miguel going to June Mar in that third quarter. All 10 points, as you mentioned, coming from that third quarter. Double double for him. So a lot of weapons here for San Miguel working for them as they have the eight point lead to start the fourth quarter. You can see the quarter scoring there. Joe right there, Scotty Thompson just finding Joe DeVance on that pick and roll. Great find by Scotty. Lead back down to six. TJ Perez on the outside looking for some space. Arwin Santos for three, no, in and out. Tolentino with the rebound. And here comes Paranga Ginebra. Trying to cut into this lead even further. JDV looking for back-to-back -back shots, not that time. CJ in the open court, finds Pesumal. Well, the three-point shooting of the Beermen have cooled off. As you said, chances are the law of averages will catch up with the team. Yep, that's why they, you know, they have the average of percentages when it comes to 
shooting from the three-point line. And usually, no one can beat the law of averages. <laughs> Eventually, San Miguel had to miss in this game. Tolentino for three. Short. But again, Scotty Thompson was there. And he has given Barangay Hinebra a lot of extra possessions here. Foul's going to be called on Perez. TJ Perez looking over the bench and saying, give me a little bit more time, don't take me out. Caperal, quick jumper, not going to work. Here comes Ross, they find CJ. CJ glides. Foul there by Scotty. And right there, CJ recognizing that Joe DeVance is on him. He knows he's faster and more athletic than him, just using his speed on that drive. Two free throws, CJ Perez. Easily makes the first. Aguilar is going to check back in. T Stan will check in for Joe DeVance. So the starters coming in for Barangay Hinebra and also for San Miguel. Perez makes both. And San Miguel playing a 2-3 zone here on defense, trying to disrupt the offense of Barangay Hinebra, just giving them a different look. Let's see if it works. Cross-court pass, now they go to Chapit inside. Might have traveled, but nonetheless get two points. So Chapit Aguilar with a two-point basket, giving them a six-point disadvantage only in the fourth. Perez will go inside. They might count that. They say no basket. The foul was right before he made his move. Right here, Chapit Aguilar against Arwin Santos. Lost control of the basketball. But easy two for him as he moved Arwin Santos out of the way. Under 10 minutes to play here. Final of three games this Friday. Chapa to the rebound off that CJ miss. LA Tenorio is back in action as well for Barangay Hinebra. Not to mention Stanley Pringle. So four starters for Barangay Hinebra and Arvin Tolentino from the bench, the only bench player for Hinebra right now. Misses the that three. That's just too easy for Chris Ross. And Chris Ross using his size against the smaller LA Tenorio there. He's been going there every time he's matched up with the Teniente. Lead is back up to eight. Pringle for three. Nope. And the Beerman off and running. Arwin, it falls in the hands of Lasseter. That would have been a fortunate three-pointer. They were looking for Arwin Santos. It went through his hands and went to Marshall. And you can see every time San Miguel gets the rebound, they try to push the pace, making the big men of Barangay Hinebra run. See Stan. Will be fouled. At what stage do you bring back Junmar? I think right now, if the goal for San Miguel is to outrun the bigs of Barangay Hinebra, they might have to wait for Junmar. But Junmar checks in for San Miguel right away, as you said it. They're going to look for their finishing kick right here, right now. Pringle explodes and gives it up. Jumper for Christian, not going to work. CJ plucks that rebound, and here comes Chris Ross. A 
It's going to be an offensive foul going to be called here on Junmar. And I think there was a shove off there while he was trying to get the ball in the post. That's a big call against the multiple MVP. That was not like that was not an MVP like call. <laughs> Christian trying to move him out. He just can't be moved. He's an immovable force. Tolentino for three. The third time's a charm. The high arcing three point shot there for Arvin Tolentino, and that's why he's in the ball game. He can make outside shots even at his height. And, and again, Chris Ross. That's right, the lead is down to five. Marshall tries to answer and does. And that's what happens when you send help, send a double on that post for Chris Ross against LA Tenorio. Great job by finding Marshall Lasseter on the weak side. Foul's gonna be called on Junmar. Two quick fouls called on the big man, the Kraken. But it's going to be Barangay Hinebra calling the first time out here of the fourth and final period. This timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. San Miguel Beerman up against the defending champion Barangay Hinebra Kings. Marshall Lasseter left open for three. And he's not going to miss that many of those. And especially with an open shot like that. He's been doing that ever since he stepped on the PBA court. 11 points for him and three three pointers for the sharpshooter. That's an excellent clip. Three out of five, Diego. Of course, high percentage, 60% from the three-point line. Seven and a half remaining here in this encounter. LA with the pass inside. Ross with a swipe. That's got to count as a steal. Yep, that's going to go to him. That's a great defensive play by the man of steel, Chris Ross. Junmar taking his time, looking for his position. Another three here from the outside, and that's going to open up the floodgates. And as we said earlier, it's going to be a different ball game when Marcel Lasseter heats up. That's going to drop there. And most of the shots of Marshall Lasseter coming off the catch and shoot, you know, just using the advantages of his other teammates as you can see right here they're trying to go to Junmar and expect him to be open again on the weak side Ball's going to be called in Christian looks like Chris is hurt though he banged bodies with Stan Hardinger that's a big guy to bang bodies with. And Chris is a tough individual. For yep. him to go down like this, he's really hurt. It'll be good if you can see that on the replay to see exactly what transpired. And of course, the teammates there, just to check up on their main point guard. This is what happened. 
Oh, it's a hip-to-hip -hip collision there. You can see as C. Stan was trying to hedge on that ball screen, Chris Ross was there first in that position. And definitely C. Stan's hip is much, much bigger yep. than the one of Chris. <laughs> And if that happens when they stop the play because you're down, you have to sit out and get sub. That's just the rule in the PBA. So Chris Ross will have to sit out first. And he knows that rule. So obviously, as far as he's concerned, if he could have gotten right up, he would have. And he's still struggling there on the sidelines. Yep. Beerman might try to sue for more time. Let's talk things over and at the same time, let Chris be able to recover. They're still up by nine. These are the matches for tomorrow. Terra Firma and Northport at 2 and at 4.35. It's Blackwater bossing up against Phoenix Super LPG. So some more important games for the squads. Actually, only Blackwater bossing is hypothetically out of it. But then actually, if they win their last three games, they still might be able to catch the last bus yep, to probably. the quarters. Probably to get that tie for that eighth spot. But let's see if they pull up some wins here to end the conference. Well, it's got to start tomorrow. If they lose tomorrow, it's official. They're out. Romeo's checked back in. Gonna call a 30 second timeout here. Couldn't find a friend to pass to. And at this point of the game, you don't want to give up that turnover and give the ball to Barangay Ginebra. A lot of time remaining here. Six minutes, 15 seconds. So expect Coach Leo to drop a quick hitter here for San Miguel as they only have less than five seconds to shoot that basketball. On the other hand, Coach Tim Cohn tried to anticipate exactly what Coach Leo is trying to diagram. And of course, Coach Tim has seen a lot of plays in the span of his career. They're going to run out of time. They probably thought they had six seconds. Yep. And I thought CJ was going to shoot that three, but it's going to be a turnover for the Beermen. Still a nine-point lead by San Miguel. Barangay Hinebra now with possession. Floater will drop. And LA Tenorio again with a soft touch with that floater off the ball screen. And that's the only shot you can do if you're going up against Junmar Fajardo on that drive. Junmar carving out some space. Block there. Two and one break. Chop it with a slam. 
Eli Tenorio finding Japet Aguilar on that fast break opportunity and Japet just flying high for that slam. More of a secondary break already there. But nonetheless, Barangay Ginebra within five. Marshall for three. Bang! And just when you think Barangay Ginebra was inching closer and closer, San Miguel finding Marshall Lassiter for that three-pointer. Eight-point lead for them. Christian, the pass a little bit too high, but Chapet gets to it. And high-low play there for Barangay Ginebra. And what they need now is to make a stop and get another opportunity to trim down this lead. Final five minutes of this classic encounter. And it looks like it's going to be three free throws here for Terrence Romeo. And we Tenorio don't saying he didn't touch him. Yep. And right here, LA Tenorio, you're right, secondary break. Great pass there and just flying over Arwin Santos is Japet Aguilar. And Japet says, join my poster. That was definitely a poster and that's definitely going to go as the top place For sure. in this conference. First of three goes down. Second, no problem. And one final free throw here. That's going to get it back to eight. And perfect from the line is Terence Romeo on that clip. Check that back to nine. Nice handoff. Great two-man action, pick and roll play. L.A. Tenorio finding C-Stan on the roll. Romeo turns the corner. Floater works for Marshall. And Marshall Lassiter just waiting for the pass and reading his defender. He creates space. If they give space, he's going to shoot that three. If they close out, he can also drive. Lead back up to nine. Under four minutes to be played here. Tenorio puts up a three. We'll come up short, but Chapit's there. Basket and one opportunity here. An opportunity here for Barangay Hinebra to cut the lead down to six if Japet makes this free throw. Bonus free throw for Chapit Aguilar. Watch it there, falls right in his hands. Quickly got up. Foul's going to be called on June Mar Fajardo. It's the right place at the right time for Japet Aguilar on that play. A little bit too strong on that free throw. This sets up an exciting end game, though. So time management crucial for both teams. San Miguel will try to milk up the clock as much as they can, while Barangay Ginebra will have to pick up the pace to make a run here. Marsh, another floater, short that time. Pringle rushing down court. The foul is going to be called halting proceedings. San Miguel, though, is in the penalty. Ouch. So two free throws uh, will be given to Barangay Hinebra on this play. That works in Barangay Hinebra's favor. They can cut this lead down to possibly five. And the clock's not moving. Yep, that's what you want if you're trying to make a comeback, especially late in the fourth quarter. Chris Ross for CJ Here comes Chris Ross back in action. He looks yeah. okay. He seems fine, Chris Ross. Of course, you want him in the end game if you're San Miguel. He knows where to go. He knows where the advantages are, especially on offense and on defense. He can make stops. Here comes Ross playing the one. Finds the veteran Arwin. 
Why not go to Junmar Fajardo once again? Your main man all these years. That's good defense. Here's Scotty on the break. Pringle's going to be fouled. That's two more free throws. And it's going to be free opportunities again for Barangay Hinebra. And you don't want to foul them if you're San Miguel. And both those fouls were from Marshall Lasseter. Yep. And Barangay Hinebra, every time they get that ball, especially at this point of the game, every time they get that rebound, they try to push the pace. Because time is not on their side in this game. Well, now they're just going to be down by possibly three with under three to play. So one possession ball game here in the fourth quarter. As we said at the top of the coverage, an epic encounter. And it's proving to be every bit of it. Ross kicks it out. Lasseter short. Ross battling for that, saying he got fouled. And great idea there by Chris Ross going to the post against the smaller LA Tenorio just to find advantages. And they found an open shot by Marshall, just not able to finish. Pringle will attack once again. Why not? He's not going to get that to drop, though. Scotty up against Chris. Looking for a better angle for the entry pass. There it is. Ross thought about the three, gives it up. Oh. Stanley try to dive for it. Look at the hustle by Stanley Pringle. He might be, you know, the best player for Barangay Hinebra, but the effort will always be there. Three points separating these two squads. Exactly two minutes remaining. 4.2 seconds on the shot clock. Here for the Beerman. Maybe a Marshall or a Terrence Romeo shot here. Maybe now they can use that play that Coach Leo drew up yep. a while ago with 4.5 seconds. Last two minutes. Romeo! Oh. Bang! That's big. And right there, Scotty Thompson not giving landing space for Terence Romeo on that three-pointer right here. Shot clock going down, step back to create space. And the focus of Terence Romeo to hit that three-pointer with contact. Scotty Thompson on the landing space there. That's why he got called for a foul. And there was some body contact as well. Romeo completes the four-point play. It's a clutch bucket for Terence Romeo. A clutch basket if I've ever seen one. And a steal here. And the finish. So offense, defense, and offense for Terence Romeo. And look at this shot again. Terence Romeo creating space with the step back. And as you said, body contact. But the focus to still hit the three-pointer. To the dismay of Coach Tim Cohn. His team now on the ropes here. Terrence Romeo has come up huge here in the last two plays. 
And Terrence Romeo hot in the first quarter for San Miguel. A couple of three-pointers, no problem. Even if there's defense in front of him, he's still gonna make those kinds of buckets. So Terrence Romeo stepping up big time for San Miguel. 26 big points. None bigger than that four-point play he had earlier against one of the better defenders that we have here in Scotty Thompson. And we were talking about it pre-game. He has the keys to the offense of San Miguel and he's showing us why. Just a reliable scorer for San Miguel. Let's see what Barangay Ginebra does here. Still a chance. A lot of time remaining. But they got to score. Tenorio for three. Bang! Big baskets from both these squads here. Just a, a minute point. and a half remaining. Just a six point ball game for San Miguel. You try to get the ball out of the hands of Terrence Romeo. Now he's going to make his move. Shot clock, down to seven. Arwin. From 15 feet, buries that. That was a difficult shot from Arwin Santos. Trying to look inside, Chapet gets away, no. A foul's going to be called on Junmar. And look at this, Arwin Santos against Chapet Aguilar. Patience for the fake. And the fall away jumper over the outstretched arms of Japet Aguilar. And look at the celebration. <laughs> Can you say another clutch jumper there? <laughs> Just flexing his muscles. Japit's going to make that. So clutch free throws here for Japit Aguilar. Trying to make it a six-point ball game. And he completes it. And now they're going for that full court press. Trying to force turnovers. Nice save there by Ross. Go to Terrence, and a go for a no-look pass. And the shot clock has reset for San Miguel here. Because there was a change of possession? Off that save, I yep, guess. Probably they gave it. Romeo for three. You know, we were given a bit of information a while ago. That four-point playoff, that three from Terrence Romeo, was his 500th in the PBA. So Terrence Romeo making history as well in this game. And his 500th turned out to be a four-point play. Wow. And just the threat of Terrence Romeo from the outside, forcing defenses to close out and... A little bit too much here in his last two three-pointers. He got fouled on both opportunities. Trying to bail out San Miguel Beer here with his three free throws. Timeout's going to be called by Barangay Ginebra here as they find themselves back down by nine points.
Welcome back to our coverage of the Honda PBA Philippines Cup 2021. Anthony Stai here together with Diego Dario as Coach Tim Cohn looks to try to map out what he hopes could be a 10-point play. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was a 10-point play <laughs> in basketball, Coach Tim would definitely find a way to get that, especially at this point of the game. Well, right now, obviously, they need a quick basket. A three if they can get it or a two, but they need a basket, but they're gonna have to play the foul game here. Yep. So, they don't have the luxury here to bring the ball around the court. As much as possible, quick shots here for Barangay Ginebra. Game reset here, San Miguel Beer with two full timeouts. They took up, trying to look for that quick three. That should be it. And this guy who has the ball right now, Terrence Romeo, came up clutch for his team. Just timely buckets for San Miguel. They might even take the turnover here. And they're gonna do. Shot clock violation. 1.6 seconds remaining here. And the Beermen are going to win back-to-back -back against two of the top contenders for the title, TNT the other day, and today the defending champions, Barangay Ginebra. And of course, San Miguel just pulling away in that fourth quarter, not allowing Ginebra to even get the lead. So timely buckets from a lot of players, but most of all, Terrence Romeo, with the, especially that four-point play. So who could our best player of the ball game be? <laughs> Take a wild guess. Well, we're going to give it to somebody you didn't expect. We're going to give it to Marshall Lasseter. Our next level player of the ball game is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Well, he stretched the floor for San Miguel. 19 points for him. He allowed the defense of Inebra to stay on him, allowing a lot of players of San Miguel to get their buckets in Terrence Romeo, Chris Ross, even Junmar Fajardo. So, Marshall Lasseter, one of the key factors in their win today. Well, as they said, you know, you could choose a whole lot of other Beermen, but, and you could never go wrong. Because, obviously, the Beermen, total team effort, come up with a win here over the defending champions, Barangay Ginebra. And these are our updated team standings. And San Miguel inching their way up there now. At the number three seed, they only have five wins, Magnolia with six, but San Miguel only has two losses. So that's why they're in that top three, Barangay Ginebra on that seventh spot. So still, still in the playoffs for Barangay Ginebra if you're going to hold the playoffs at this point. The problem for Barangay Ginebra, the streak for them continues. Loss, win, loss, win, loss, win and another loss here today. So it's the consistency that has <laughs> been the challenge for Barangay Ginebra in this Philippine Cup. Let's take you now to the press room. With you joining us are San Miguel Beermen, head coach Leo Austria, and our best player of the game, Marshall Lasseter. Congratulations, coach and Marshall, on your win. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Marshall, how did your team prepare for Ginebra? Um, you know, we had a one-day... Um, kind of a interv pretty much we had just one day and it was kind of hard for us to, to get a game plan but fortunately the coaches gave us a great game plan coming in today uh, we had to execute it was uh, started on defense and we just had to maintain the defense throughout the night okay coach Leo um, back to back wins po kayo um, ano po yung sa tingin yung ginagawa yung tama tsaka saan pa po kayo mag improve yeah, since uh, they start up this uh, semi-bubble, uh, going to Clark Pampanga, so we're really preparing uh, for the big games, uh, especially the last two games we had, uh, Token Tex and then Hinebra. And then because of the cancellation of some of the games, so we're expecting that Token Tex and Hinebra will be our opponent because there's no other way. And I'm so happy we're able to get some time to prepare for these uh, last two games of ours. 
Marshall, what made you so confident in your shooting today? Um, it's just practice. You know, every day we're, we're out here practicing hard, getting, getting up game shots. Uh, I got to thank my teammates uh, for finding me, you know, keeping uh, everyone confident. You know, coaches have confidence in me. My teammates have confidence in me. And when the shot's there, I just want to take it. And that's what happened tonight. Um, the opportunity arises. I just want to uh, be that floor spacer for, for our team. Okay. Now we turn you over to our press friends. First up is Mr. Bong Lozada. Hi, Coach. Hi. Good evening. Coach, um, two-game winning streak after yung after kayo matalo sa sa Colombia nung isang araw. So, Coach, um, ito na ba uli ang panibagong start ng winning streak nyo? And paano nyo po mamimaintain yung gantong level? Well, it's hard to tell ano, what's going to happen in the game. And maybe our loss uh, with Terra Firma, it's a wake-up call. It served us at talagang ano eh. Uh, we have to wake up and that's what happened. Because after Terra Firma, we don't know yet who will be our opponent after a week. And we're eager to play. And all of a sudden, it was token text undefeated, and now Hinebra, who is trying uh, their best na to cut up uh, to the kind of level na the other team is playing. And we're so lucky uh, because uh, uh, our team is uh, really solid. And then in the practice, they're really working hard, uh, especially uh, yung key players namin. And they know what at stake uh, in this tournament. Eh. Thanks, Coach. Up next is Mr. Ray Hoble. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, Ray. Uh, Coach, uh, last season kasi, di ba, uh, nagkaroon kayo ng chance na makakuha ng twice to beat no, going to the playoffs. No? But, but this time, may chance kayo ulit na makakuha niya. Uh, you're still in contention for the number two spot. Uh, mas gusto mo yung chance mo ngayon this time na dahil complete lineup mo, and then nadagdag pa si CJ. Yeah, of course, ano, uh, going to this uh, tournament, so the target of every team is uh, to get into the top two. And right now, we have a chance. But uh, we're thinking of one game at a time. Because uh, uh, at one and two, you have the advantage. Eh. And, but uh, as I said, what we want to have is ano, eh, uh, to prepare every game. Because uh, you cannot tell, you cannot predict what will happen. Uh, because a lot of team is really you know, are strong. And I'm happy uh, for these players. They know uh, what's really going on here. And then the sense of urgency is really in, their, uh, in themselves. Eh. And that's what happened in our last two games. Thank you, Paul. Okay, up next is Mr. Ruben Terado. My question is for Marshall. Uh, Marshall, with the current situation uh, with... Uh, with the semi bubble, is it difficult to to stay consistent with your outside shooting with with all the uh, with the current situation, Marshall? Yeah. Um, anytime you come into a, a new setting, uh, this is a new gym for all of us. It's going to be uh, difficult. You know, I, I feel like the more games we can play here, the more comfortable we are as a shooter to get uh, used to these rims. And uh, I feel like I kind of got it in the last game. Uh, finding my touch, and I just want to continue to build on that and um, just having the confidence and keep shooting and uh, believing that it'll go in. Um, coach. Right now, let's take a look at the game highlights brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. And a lot of buckets for both teams in the first quarter. Threes from Terrence Romeo. Threes from Stanley Pringle, and it was a great first quarter for both teams. Actually, it's a great first half, really, for both these squads, shooting-wise. And Marshall Lasseter, he said that he's getting used to the rims here in Pampanga, and that's what he's showing here in the first and all the quarters as well. First quarter goes to the Beerman by six points, but here comes L.A. Tenorio. Knocking down that three. And as you said, both teams shooting well early in this first half, even CJ Paris. So it was a three point party in this first half. Mota Tua also had a three, but look at this. Barangay Hinerba tries to answer back, and they do, courtesy of Scotty Thompson. So most of the highlights, as you noticed here, 
are all three pointers and San Miguel came up with an eight point lead to end the first half. In the third quarter, the percentages started to slow down a little bit, but here, Christian taking it strong to the rack. And he's been doing that against Junmar Fajardo all game. And Junmar Fajardo doing his own version on the other side, dominating the paint for After San Miguel. scoreless first two quarters, he had 10 points here in the third. JDV will check in, briefly come in for a minute or two and give a few assists here and there. In the fourth period, this is where the veterans stepped up. Chapit Aguilar with a big slam here. A great pass here, LA Tenorio finding Chapit Aguilar on tra in transition, and just flying high over Arwin Santos. We're gonna see that highlight again and again for weeks to come. And our player of the game shooting timely three-pointers for San Miguel. Look at this, four-point play from Terrence Romeo, his 500th of his career. And look at this once again, Terrence Romeo driving, stepping back, seeing the rim, the focus to hit the shot, even with the contact by Scotty Thompson. To the dismay of coach Tim Cohn and his Barangay Hinebra Kings, the defending champions, will go down with a loss here today. And San Miguel coming up the win column. So they're going to be in the top three of the standings for this Philippine Cup. So still on target for the top two, as they say, for a twice-to-beat advantage heading into the quarterfinals.